All right, let's check this out real quick. Sorry about that. Testing, testing, testing. Hey, there we go. Wait for just a microsecond, then I'm good. Yeah, no problem. All right, guys, sorry about that. Uh, we'll go ahead and get started now. So, uh, <laughs> we, uh, I turned on the Pantheon Radio app there to check the voices and to make sure everything was sounding good. And I had this slow-mo going on, so it sounded really distorted and slow. I had to restart it, but everything looks to be good now. Uh, excited to be on here finally with the mic up and running. I apologize. We've tried this three different times so far, and we failed every single time due to some technical issue. So tonight, we're looking good. We're starting on time. Had a small hiccup. Restarted it. Back to normal. Loving it. Um, so with all that being said, I'm going to go ahead and just kick it off tonight by saying, guys, I'm excited to be here on first off uh, Twitch with all of you. So thank you all for joining in Twitch. And then we also have PantheonRadio.com that we're uh, streaming live on with the podcast tonight. So I'm excited to be on the show with them. These guys are phenomenal. They've been doing a lot of really, really neat stuff. And I want to go ahead and start out and let everybody know I tried to last Wednesday night. But I don't think it came through very clearly due to the mic issues. But I want to let, make sure everybody got that and knows about it tonight. So Pantheon Radio is doing a March competition. What they're doing is they're giving away a color treatment mug. Um, I believe I said that right. It's basically it, it's a heat changing mug so that, you know, as it gets hot or cold, it'll change colors for you. But it's got the Pantheon Radio logo on it. And then you get to put your character's name on it. So they're going to pay for that and send it to you. They're also going to send an Amazon Echo Dot as well so that you can listen to Pantheon Radio 24-7 wherever you're at via that Amazon Echo Dot, which is a really cool thing. And all they're asking, guys, they're asking for a little help on putting together a commercial. They would like to start putting together some Pantheon Radio commercials. Uh, they want a script that's around 100, 100 words or so, uh, 500 words at max. So for some of you that get a little crazy... Uh, you know, they have put a limit on the amount of words you can have in there, but they would like you to send over a script uh, with a with a, a radio uh, type commercial and they're going to put that together and then broadcast it over Pantheon Radio. And the winner of that, they're going to give, like I said, that heat changing mug as well as the Amazon Echo Dot. So that's a really cool prize. If you haven't already, head over to PantheonRadio.com uh, and you can either click on the uh, enter here logo that appears in the top right or you can do the pantheonradio.com backslash compo and that's c-o-m-p-o to uh, check out the uh, prize and the how to enter there so again guys hopefully everybody jumps on that and uh, look forward to seeing you know what all happens and the uh, commercials coming out of that i think it's gonna be exciting but moving on so another thing we tried to get to this wednesday was one of the twitter posts from pantheon and I just want to make sure that I'm up clear with this. Guys, Pantheon posts about twice a week on Twitter. And they post these questions, and they don't really have a lot of meaning behind them. It's just to kind of get community engagement, get feedback. Um, Pantheon VR has more or less an idea of what they're looking to accomplish and how they're looking to accomplish it. But they're always looking for feedback. They're always looking for input. They like to hear the communities. Uh, you know, input and it's a lot of this is a little hypothetical, but at the same time, uh, it does end up giving them ideas going forward. So with that being said, I'll start out with the first one. I believe this was on Tuesday and they sent us the tweet. Uh, if you were given, if you were given the choice to play on a special rule set server, what added options would you like to see that you think would be popular enough to maintain a server's community? So I saw a lot of posts, a lot of replies, a lot of feedback on this, and uh, honestly, there were some really neat ones. I liked what I saw in a lot of them. I thought they were uh, kind of, you know, um, out there. But one of them I saw that reminded me of another game that I that I was playing recently, but I thought it was kind of interesting when I when I read it. It was a Wild West style, and I tried to mention this on Wednesday, and I think the mic interference might have interrupted me on this. But uh, regardless, I liked this. I thought it was pretty neat. Uh, basically, they said turn PvP on, let players mod themselves, and allow players to even loot other players as they die. But, you know, from from what I'm hearing, when they said Wild Wild West, they truly meant a Wild Wild West style. So I thought that was kind of neat, just a, a no rules, you know, uh, little to no moderation from you know anybody on staff. It's just more or less the players modding themselves and give them the full capabilities of taking justice into their own hands, you know, or not. 
So uh, I thought that was interesting. I just, I was, I don't know if I'd ever play on a server like that. I think it might get a little too crazy for me. But at the same time, I can see the intrigue in that, the interest in that. Um, Maul, I don't know if you had a chance to read that tweet or not, or, you know, have any thoughts on that. But uh, I just want to kind of use as a segue to introduce our guest tonight. Uh, one of my uh, guild council members, you know, Maldoon, he's also a streamer on Twitch. Um, so I've got the stream in the description there. But I want to go ahead and pass over to him real quick and just uh, let him say hi. And uh, Maul, if uh, you want to, uh, make sure that you let everybody know what your stream is so they can go check that out afterwards if they'd like. Hey, girl, hey. Thanks, Sacred. I am Muldoon. I am uh, just starting up my stream. So if you go to my stream, it's going to be pretty bare bones. But it's basically twitch.tv slash MRPD Muldoon, M-U-L-D-O-O-N. And it's going to be... Pretty similar to Sacreds. He's actually been helping me a lot with getting started with it, but I'm highly dedicated to Pantheon. So the whole reason I'm starting up streaming is to play Pantheon in the future. Uh, the types of games I'll be playing really are going to not be terribly popular, but I do want to try and play a, at least a popular game or two uh, just to get some viewers and followers. But uh, it's going to be games that are going to be a lot like me. So uh, anyway, yes, I did have a moment, uh, Sacred, to read that tweet. Personally, I am such a purist that I tend to not get too excited about special rule sets, but one of my favorite special rule sets is a TLP server, just starting fresh from the beginning, and <clears throat> I am such a sucker for those servers. I will hop from server to server when a new one starts. I will drop ship, or I will uh, drop everything and immediately beeline to the next new server, and um, that's probably my favorite type of uh, special rule set. Uh, it doesn't have to be any kind of special bells and whistles, just something that can kind of help me get that nostalgic feel of a certain era of a game that I like to play. But with Pantheon, I'm kind of expecting that I may not want to steer away because the whole reason I'm so into Pantheon now is I would love to just get on the, the boat immediately with the game and be in that forefront, be a high-end crafter, be a part of the community, and I wouldn't want to step away from that. So unless they had so so that kind of special rule set really wouldn't work right that's just day one of a new game for me um other than that i i tend to like pvp but only within a controlled environment so that wild west game i just i man i, I would i would rage so hard if i lost <laughs> everything i'd work so hard for you know oh yeah definitely definitely now now you said that you like TLP servers. I'm glad that you brought that up because that actually there's a segue into that that I want to bring up with the next tweet that, that we had come out on Thursday. Now this one got in my opinion a little bit more edgy responses I'll say. Uh, so <laughs> with that BR tweeted out or Pantheon uh, MMO at Pantheon MMO tweeted out Season passes, DLC, subscriptions, free to play, buy to play, pay to play, expansions, early access, microtransactions, cash shops. Where do you draw the line in all of this? And what is your preferred method to pay for an MMORPG? Now, one of the comments that I saw mentioned that they would like to hear VR's take on a catch up to our play, a pay to catch up more a more or less type of mindset where once you know you get five or six years down the road then can somebody pay to kind of skip some of the earlier stages to catch up to the current content now like you were saying Maul, some people they like those tlp servers because in my opinion what we see most mmos do is they start out with challenge and difficulty in the game and they start out with with you know this um it, it takes time and effort to play the game and then it slowly morphs into this more mushy, gushy, you know, user friendly and, you know, people are able to pay to catch up uh, type of game. They're able to skip content, skip those memories. They're able, the challenge isn't quite there. And, you know, to me, that's a huge dissatisfaction in MMOs to date. I think it takes the magic out of an MMORPG when someone's able to skip content or when the content becomes less challenging. And that's why we see so many people going back to TLP servers. That's why you see so many people going back to these old vanilla servers or these old, uh, you know, classic servers, if you will, for MMOs is because they want not only that nostalgia factor, but they want the difficulty that came along with it. 
So, you know, for me, that was actually something I, I tweeted back to him and I let him know. I think that we should, one, hold off on, on the catch up to play question for a few years. Let's just, let's table that one. Let's put a pin in it and let's come back to it in a few years after Pantheon has been established. We've got a good thing going. You know, expansions have been released. We've, we've, we've uh, added more content and let's see what we have then. Because in my mind, I see Pantheon going horizontal with expansions more so than vertical. Now, are they going to go vertical? I expect vertical eventually, but I see personally horizontal expansions being a bigger key to Pantheon going forward. Um, I personally would like to see that myself, and and I'm not saying that they've mentioned that um, specifically or said that that's how they're going to be. I believe they've talked a little bit about it here and there, um, but I would like to see more horizontal. I'd like to see them add content at that level, not necessarily that I have to increase in level, but that I have more content to explore, to conquer, to you know, uh, you know, do at that current level. Um, and maybe I need to, you know, acquire some other things to experience that content. I don't know. We'll figure out what that all means and how that all works. But again, I'm looking at the more horizontal path than the vertical. And if that's the case, the way that I see that happening is if you add horizontal content, that means that even if I start five years late and I'm brand new, I'm going to experience that, that game for the most part at the lower levels, much like everybody else did when they started out five years before me. Now, when I get to the the higher end content, it may mean that I can instead of going to that older content that's no longer you know seen or used as much, I can kind of go over to the newer content that more people are at. It's more populated, um, and then I can always go back to that older content, but I don't have to worry about going back to it and not being challenging because it's a horizontal move back. It's it's not. There's nothing that means that that content's less challenging or less difficult. It's actually going to require just as much of the challenge and just as much of difficulty to complete because I've got to get the same gear, I've got to get the same stats, I've got to have the same resistance, um, you know, and I've got to play a lot of what the same way that the the veterans of the game did. Um, but now I get to go back and do that kind of after I've done that new content because it's just a horizontal move over. Now those veterans may not have to go get any gear because they've already got the gear for it. They may not have to get any resistance or build any of those up because they've already got it, but they can still come over and still have that same challenge, that still nostalgia that they had, you know, five years before while helping me, you know, explore that as someone new to the game. So again, I see a lot of possibilities with horizontal expansions over vertical that would eliminate the need to pay to catch up and still allow us to have that nostalgia and that challenge in the game. And I just wanted to kind of throw it to you. I know this one was uh, something I'm springing on you last minute here, but did you have a chance to think over that one at all? Or uh, you do have any thoughts on that? Oh, I have a million thoughts. And I'll try to keep it down to like two or three. Okay. Um, <laughs> I want to draw from prior experience because the, the question of whether a game should be vertically moving or horizontal is it's age old it literally is the core of whether a game has continuity or not and i agree with you in the sense that horizontal gameplay makes it easier for people to jump into the game for example i love everquest it is my number one game i've ever played i would never ever in my wildest dreams for even a second think i would try to talk somebody into playing it right now it's impossible to get into right now even with all the quality of life changes that they've made to try and make it easy for somebody to get in, the game is garbage. And and I I, oh, I hate to say that, but it's it, you just can't do what they've done to get people to get to max level, erase basically all the magic of the game, and put it into a current era that just doesn't work. It, it's not unique enough. It's not a it's not a beautifully played game. It's not a great game right now. Um, so, so vertical, vertical expansions of games, it just, it really sets the tone for a twilight of your game at some point in the future. However, you can't always go horizontal. You can't keep the power creep, nothing, because I think what keeps people coming back to games, uh, especially with that request, is like an epic weapon. Something that took you literally months. You had to rely on other people. You were helping other people with theirs. Those elements of a game make it so um, addictive, make it Agreed. so uh, heartfelt, sentimental. There's something about that that brings you back. To the game. Vertical creep helps you uh, create more and more elements of that to keep the people who are still interested in the game even more interested because you're epic 1.5. Get this augment for your weapon. 
use the weapon from inventory, you know, small little things that still are hard to do and, and you feel good because you've stuck with the game that you played for so long and you put in all this effort. And so you are rewarded for that. Um, on the point of talking about being able to jump into a game and buy your way into a certain point, Final Fantasy XIV, I have to say, it is one of my favorite MMOs. It's probably my second favorite. Um, it <sighs> takes, I, I want to say, if you powered through it, you knew exactly what you were doing, you had help doing it. It takes you like 30-some hours to get through just story quests alone during this period where you're at level 50, to get to the next expansion. And they have been talking about for some time, creating something called a jump potion that says, you know what? You don't have to do that. You get to just start in heaven's work. Because if you don't, it, I think that's a huge barrier to entry. I think people lose interest. The, the story is compelling, but if you are coming into a game and you want to play with friends, I have done this before. I have helped people through that. And it makes me want to die. It, it is so boring and so like you are a warrior of light and you're going on errands delivering girl scout cookies for literally 15 hours it's so annoying and it makes it drives me bonkers so they're thinking about introducing this potion that helps you get past that hurt and um i'm all for stuff like that because you can still go to the end you can still look at beautiful cutscenes. i love the story in that game and the cutscenes are absolutely gorgeous um, you can experience those on your own time. Um, the downside is, of course, that if you t eat the potion and then you start up in Heaven's Ward, you are already assuming that you've already seen stuff. So there are some spoilers there, and it's kind of a catch-22. If you want to start playing with your friends a lot sooner and you eat the potion, you've kind of robbed yourself of the opportunity to watch. Um, there are great providers of lore, like on YouTube, that give you like, hey, 30 hours of content in 20 minutes, let's go. And I think that's a great way to do it. Um, anyway, long story short, I think it's a really good idea to include elements of that. But to allow somebody to come in day one in a game and also, hey, eat this potion, you'll have all the gear you need to be raiding right now with some of the highest people who have been working for years to get to this point. I think that's where there has to be a, a certain limit to it. And I guess it just depends yeah. on what kind of game Pantheon's going to be. You know, can we can we offer a jump? Is it a vertical expanding game? And what does the jump look like? So it's it's like, yes, I'm all for it. Plus, I, I don't mind pay to win games. I'm one of the like 1% of the world that is willing to actually pay to win on a game. So um, I don't have a problem with those things, but I have a problem with kind of robbing some of that uh, built in value that people think that they have, which is me included that, oh, I've spent four years in that request. I'm entitled to the best stuff because I work so hard for it. It's hard to watch somebody come in and like boop right into it within a couple hours. You know what I mean? So, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Hard questions. Go ahead. Sorry. No, no, you're, you're absolutely right. I mean, and everyone is entitled to their own opinion. I mean, in reality, everyone, everyone, and that's the thing that I don't like seeing when I see these questions posted, because a lot of these questions are hypothetical. Pantheon has already stated what they would like to do. Um, you know, how they would like to make the payments. They've got that on the uh, FAQ, and I believe I could go read it right now. Uh, but then again, I don't have it up in front of me, so I'll just go off my... This is what I remember it as. Uh, Pantheon has made it very clear they do not want cash shops at this point in time, and they want to look toward the traditional subscription-based payment model, uh, which would mean something similar to you buy the game, you pay for a subscription to play the game for on a monthly fee or so, and then you look to pay maybe for expansions down the road as they come out, things like that. Uh, they've gone and said that they would like to look at that traditional payment plan as their, their primary option. However, that's not set in stone, so don't quote me on that if something does slightly shift you know, going forward to release. But again, I, I believe that these are a lot of hypothetical questions. Everyone's entitled to their own opinion. And, you know, like you said, you're one of the 1% that doesn't mind pay to win. Um, I'm on the flip side. I'm one of the 99% that I completely don't like it. But at the same time, we can have a conversation about that without telling each other that we're completely wrong and ignorant for not knowing better. Um, you know, so I just want to encourage everyone, if you see someone with a different opinion, 
and they have oh i like cash shops oh i don't oh i like expansions oh i don't oh i like early access oh i don't let them have their opinion there's nothing wrong with someone having an opinion that's different than yours and there's no reason to degrade them or tell them that they're wrong uh, because of this basically let them have their opinion just share why you have your opinion and share you know you can always say why you don't have their opinion but i would personally like to see more of an open community in pantheon where we don't get defensive about it we don't you know uh, i don't want to say attack but we we don't uh, become very um, aggressive in our our direct comments back towards those type of you know opinions so that's just something for me on the side note there because i just want to point that out something i don't see very often but i have seen from time to time and i just like to see the community be friendly be open to you know in you know others opinions and to allow people to share them you know, everyone's entitled to it, so why not let them share them and let VR be the ultimate decider on how things go. Just share your opinion, and VR is going to see who, what the masses are what the masses are saying. They're going to see what the one percent saying. It you know, it's going to allow VR to see all the opinions without seeing the uh, or without a need of the uh, aggressive comments back towards others. So just keep that in mind as you know people are going forward and posting and tweeting and things like that. Uh, just a general kind of a public statement from on my behalf. I'm glad you say that, if I could, for just a second. Yeah, go ahead. Um, it's interesting because I also challenge the community to do better on that. Um, I think for the most part, the, the type of people who are coming to Pantheon are that great community from a lot of MMOs that we really love. But um, even before yep. testing started, uh, just people would be like, um, if you're part of testing, you better not be having any fun at all. You better be so focused on testing and don't even try to come into this trying to have fun. And I think that is such a pretentious way to look at it because I think you can do both. And also part of the game is that it's supposed to be fun. And part of the testing and the feedback, you know, it, it should be, that should be part of the experience. Hey, I'm not having fun with it. It was great, but maybe you should know I'm not having a great time. Um, so I, I just don't want to see a, a certain like highfalutin elitist mentality uh, kind of prevalent and that people are stifling other opinions because the game only gets better the more brainstormed ideas that are out there. Yeah, no, and I'm I'm definitely I'm hoping that the ones that are in testing are having a blast while testing and reporting bugs as we saw in the newsletter, you know, and things like that. I'm hoping that those guys are just uh living it up because I would I would hope that that's where the game is, you know, they're able to do both like you said. So, I'm excited I'm so to sure. uh to hear more about that. So, I'll continue to move along here. Um, you know, like I said, guys, we, we like to keep it open and free as we're going through here. And I like to mention other things that are happening within the community. So we mentioned the tweets from this, you know, this week in VR. But I wanted to mention one that came out today and one that I'm really excited about. Voice of Terminus is going to be doing a show on March 5th at 6 p.m. Eastern Time live on Pantheon Radio, just like we are now as well as live on Twitch at Pantheon, uh, let's see here, Pantheon underscore VOT. So twitch.tv backslash Pantheon underscore VOT. That's where you're going to find Kilston and Zippy Z having a live interview or live show with the Voice of Terminus guys. I'm excited to see that. I'm excited to hear that. Hopefully everybody can either tune in on Pantheon Radio or tune in on Twitch to check that out. It's going to be another exciting interview question and answer i'm sure kilson's gonna throw some things out there so you know we can only hope for the best with those guys but uh <laughs> you know there's no promises but i know zippy zip is gonna hold kilson straight and make sure that everything's good from the show and then uh, hopefully yarn can keep uh, lex in check but again i'm excited to see that show guys so hopefully everybody else is as well uh so again i'll make sure that everybody got that march 5th 6 p.m eastern time Voice of Terminus is going to be doing a live broadcast on Pantheon Radio as well as on Twitch TV. Make sure you check that out. Look for the tweets. Look for the uh, announcements going out next week as well. Make sure you stay tuned and, and check that out. But Can I speak ask a brief question about that? Yeah, go for it. So um, I'm kind of new to Pantheon Radio a little bit. Hopefully I'll know a lot more about it very soon. But if I were to miss, like I'm probably going to, uh, this uh, VOT thing on the 5th, which is a Monday, I work that night. Uh, does Pantheon Radio have a way to look back or listen to prior broadcasts? Or is it live only? So I want to make sure that I'm clear. So March 5th is Friday. I believe it's actually a Monday. Is it a Monday? It is. Yep. Then I might have it. Let me make sure I got it right, guys. I don't want to make sure. I don't want to make sure I'm misleading because I know Pantheon Radio does most of their shows. 
on do, 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 March 5th, a special VOT joined by... Okay, it is March 5th. Okay, so that is a Monday. Is that correct? Correct, yep. Okay, perfect. So just to be clear, I, mean, I don't know if I had mentioned it was a Friday or not. I just want to make sure that I, I didn't miss anybody up. March 5th, uh, Monday at 6 p.m. Yes, so like you were asking, uh, Pantheon Radio, if you miss it, if you miss it on Twitch and you have to go back and review it, I'll tell you, these guys, Voice of Terminus, they are awesome at posting everything they do, every show they do on their YouTube channel. So if you haven't already, let me go ahead and pull it up here. It will be posted right after the show. One second. Working with me, working with me. Oh, okay. So you're saying VOT will have it, but not necessarily Pantheon Radio. That's, that's a live only format right well pantheon radio does do replays and they might schedule a replay i'll have to wait until they make sure that our that they broadcast that um so we'll we'll wait to hear back from them but okay. uh, voice of terminus will post this on their youtube channel afterwards so they will record it over twitch and they will post the interview that will post the uh, question and answer on their youtube and i'll make sure i get that to everybody i apologize i didn't have that one that one caught me off guard so I didn't have that one on tap. I believe it is Pantheon underscore VOT uh, at YouTube or uh, backslash on YouTube. So if I'm not mistaken, that's it. But I don't want to I don't want to mislead anybody. So let me double check on that. I'll make sure I tweet it out to everybody. So if you're not following me on Twitter, make sure you do so I can get that tweeted out to you. But yeah, Pantheon Radio will be the live broadcast. And then after that, they'll do replays later of it. But they will have that recorded episode on their youtube channel for everybody to go check out when they're able to so we'll make sure we post that again make sure you're following the, the pantheon mmo to uh, twitter as well as uh, anybody else out there that's doing anything with pantheon because there's a lot of good announcements going out speaking of good stuff going out i just want to kind of bring it over into what i really want to talk about tonight so this wednesday i tried to get into this conversation i tried to talk about it fortunately we didn't get to there we didn't get to go there uh, I wanted to talk about the Synthos and Basgrams interview. So this was kind of something that we were expecting, or at least I was. Um, and I, we we saw Basgram talk about it or mention it with his, uh, you know, YouTube channel and on Twitter a few times while he was over at TwitchCon that he was trying to get this interview done. Unfortunately, they had some issues, so they were finally able to get around to doing the interview. And I'm so glad they did because there's a lot of really cool information that. Synthos was able to, to kind of give us and during these interviews it's really the best place to get some of that instant gratification for me at least when it comes to feedback and from you know from the devs mouths themselves as they're talking through things so Synthos being the guy who's really over crafting for Pantheon as a whole got to sit down with Baz Grimm and Baz did an amazing job interviewing him but a few of the things that stuck out to me we're going to talk about over the next 30 minutes or so here guys so um, you know, if we get through all this in 30, within 30 minutes, we'll see what we can go to next. But I just want to make sure that, uh, everyone knows if you go to, and again, we'll get all the YouTube channels out there, uh, follow Bazgrim TV. So that's YouTube backslash Bazgrim TV. That's B-A-Z-G-R-I-M TV. And make sure you check him out. We'll put a link into the uh, Twitch chat here in a minute for everybody that's in Twitch and then everybody on Pantheon Radio. Uh, make sure you remember the name Basgrim TV. Check him out. Look him up. Type it into Google. You should find him pretty quickly. And check out the interview with uh, Sethos uh, or Corey Lefever. So, again, let's talk about this. So, first thing that came to mind, first thing I noticed, first thing I wanted to, well, <laughs> link delete. Okay, sorry. Uh, I think I need to turn the link on for you to post in the uh, chat there, Muldoon. I apologize. Uh, so, guys in Twitch, we'll, we'll get that up for you in a minute. But, guys, over the radio, we'll uh, we'll make sure we broadcast that at the end of the show as well and make sure everybody knows what YouTube channels to go check out. All right, so let's talk about Basgram's interview real quick. First thing I noticed, Maul, I'm going to ask your opinion on this because I was really excited to hear this. So, when they talked about adventuring and crafting being two separate things, we've, we've mentioned this before, at least I've heard this before, and it put a little more clarification for me around it because I didn't experience Vanguard. So I wasn't, and I didn't experience another MMO that, that did this quite like it. But one of the things that Synthos mentioned was, let's say adventuring has levels 1 through 50. And then crafting would have levels, let's say, 1 through 50. What he mentioned is crafting should take just about as long, if not as long, um, to level up 
as adventuring. So they should level about the same rate. And what he did mention as well is you could purely do crafting and crafting alone if you wanted to. So that to me was something I've never experienced in an MMO myself. I've never experienced where you could walk into a game and just purely craft and it take you just as long to craft as it would to say level up adventuring out exploring doing dungeons and things like that i don't know i'm excited about this i thought this was a really uh kind of a, a neat thing for me to hear um I, I don't know how to describe it because i've never experienced it before but i'm excited to try it and i didn't know if you've experienced this before in any games maldoon or anything like that i have uh, as you know you and i've talked about i did play and it sounds like that's a, the exact uh situation that was there um i want to say that's also really exciting news because i am such a crafter and um I, when, when i'm looking into a game uh, for selfish reasons i want something that i do to take a lot of effort to do it because it's it's going to be quite a barrier of entry for people to want to get into it therefore it makes my craft more special that way uh, if you look at games like World of Warcraft, where literally all you have to do is just buy the supplies. Like, I even sold kits that had all the materials you needed to get from, like, 1 to 450 in a craft. It was so easy to do. Uh, with, uh, the, with basically uh, a whole separate leveling system for crafting, that is in and of itself a way to kind of gate whether or not crafting items is, is special or not on a server. And that's so important to me because I, I love a crafting community. I want crafting to be accessible to players. But I want there to be effort behind it. Um, the only uh, confusion or worry that I have about it is the way it was implemented in Vanguard and actually in other games that did something similar. You had to have materials. You can't just craft nothing, right? So to get those materials, you have to be an adventurer to go out and be able to, um, you know, pick cotton, uh, chop trees, all kinds of stuff. So it's it's always been a troubling thing like oh cool i could just be a crap but day one of a server realistically uh you're probably gonna have to work on your adventuring level you're gonna have to get strong enough to go and adventure in areas that you can gather so maybe if you i i don't know this to be true about pantheon but kind of with vanguard you have to like get to level 10 or 12 first uh get a get a good dominion over an area where you're not contested by every mob that's near a node and you're freaking out uh, that way you can go get your resources, then bring them back in to work on your craft. Um, personally, I think crafting is going to be the most important thing in Pantheon for like the first four or five months. If you want to be rich in Pantheon, you need to craft. I'm eager to find out more information on what it will be like to get materials before I get too excited about the separate uh, crafting system, other than I'm already excited in the exact same way you are, where it takes effort. It's a whole different level and layer to your character. Yeah, I, well, and that's a really good point. You know, Synthos was very clear. There are going to be nodes that are in places. They're not just going to be, you know, lined up around the gate. You know, for example, where you could just level one, walk outside and just sit there and farm nodes. They're going to be out in the environment. There's going to be danger. If you're le running around level one, trying to get to a node, trying to get to a, a you know, tree or something to harvest, or you know, somewhere in the world, there could be danger. There could be areas that you really can't explore until you have that adventuring level up, until you have, you know, some of those skills that you need to really move around the, the world um, more easily and more safely. So I, I'm 100% agreeing with you. I think that for me, when I hear crafting is going to be completely separate and from, you know, from level one, you can uh, not worry about adventuring. You can literally just go straight into crafting and go one through 15 crafting. I think, of course, for me, it's going to go hand in hand. And I think Synthos said this or Sato, sorry, said this multiple times, but I know he said it one time very clearly for people to get the best experience, the most out of their Pantheon experience, they will have to do both. That's going to be, you know, and, and I'm going to say that with, I think that goes with without saying in any MMO, if you want to get the most experience, uh, the best experience, the, the most fullest experience out of the game that you can, you, you got to look at doing everything you can in the game, everything that's available to you. So even though that these are two separate levels and two separate, you know, skills and trees that they're going to be totally independent of themselves. I think if you're not doing adventuring, and you're just doing crafting, you're really not ex experiencing the game at its fullest. And 
you know, then I think of things like, okay, for example, we did, uh, we, we look back at the December stream, I think it was, of 2016, where we were in Amber Fate, and there's a forge in Amber Fate. In the middle of a dungeon, there's a forge, which, you know, allows you to potentially forge items that you can't forge anywhere else in the world because maybe that forge is special it's unique it's it's the the heat of that forge is, is hotter than anywhere else in the world or something like that it, I, to me i think that there's going to be possibilities of stuff like that being out in the world in dungeons uh, in you know remote areas in dangerous areas that if you're just purely doing crafting you're not going to be able to get to those without some sort of adventuring along the way does that mean at level 10 you can't be a max you know, level crafter? No, I think you can. I think at level 10 you could be a max level crafter and you would have no issue if that's all you want to do is sit, you know, sit in the city and just do crafting, buy mats and, do, and then craft and then go back and forth. You know, and that's, that's, your, that's your thing. That's what you do. I think it's perfect. But I also think that there's going to be things within the game that you really can't explore to the fullest, even, even at crafting, you know, unless you become a, a better adventurer or work on your adventuring skill to some degree. Uh, so I'm excited to see how those two marry up to each other and where where they take each other because I'm in the same boat. I'm very excited about crafting, but at the same time, I'm definitely going to be looking at adventuring as my focus and then crafting as you know a sub focus as I'm going through the adventuring stages. So for me, it's really I'm going to be doing both the to the uh, as much as I can going through the game because I want to experience the entire game at its whole at its you know at everything that's possible to me I want to experience so I'm excited to see how that happens but I think that you brought up a really good point I want to make sure that that's very clear for people I don't my personal self foresee you being able to just sit in the city and craft from level 1 to 50 and it not require any travel any uh, difficulty whatsoever you know as they said they would expect crafting to be just about the same rate leveling wise as adventuring would, which in my mind, if you sat in one spot in the city and did crafting from one to 50, that would be a very uh, lonely experience in an MMO. Um, it wouldn't really kind of give you the feel of, of being a true MMO. So that's just my opinion. Some people may like that, but I think like you said, it, it's going to require both to really be as, you know, as good as it can get uh, with that. Go ahead. No, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to cap up the whole point and say, you know, uh, of course, you know, down the road, whenever you're just making a character can craft, of course, that's fine. But as we're looking at the start of the game, um, I feel like I want the game to come out tomorrow. But if it could wait until my next PTO pool opens up for 2019, <laughs> that'd be great. But I feel like <laughs> I'm going to have to do so much in such a short period of time to do everything I want to do. Like, I'm so excited about crafting, gathering, just all so, um, I don't know, just a little segue. I, but of course, like, for your initial character in the game, unless you just come in loaded, it's going to require adventuring, like, hands down. Well, and, okay, I'll, I'll put a little side note on that. And I'll think about it this way. As a guild, so so we're a guild. Let's say we have somebody. Let's say, uh, I'm going to say, uh, Sacred 2, some, some random wife or guy or somebody out there named Sacred 2, is uh, going to come into the guild and he's like, hey man, I just want to craft and I'm going to sit in the city and y'all send me mats and I'll work on crafting. Is it possible? Sure, why not? I mean, it's, it's, it's very possible. But like I said, I don't think you're going to get the fullest experience out of the game, nor do I think it's going to be a quick road, especially if, especially if you're just sitting in the city just trying to do stuff off that. But like some other said here in the chat, there may be a whole nother thing to crafting. You might have to travel from town to town, delivering goods, doing work orders, things like that, to build your crafting skill up. Uh, there, there might be just a whole different world when it comes to crafting that we might not be used to in other MMOs. So I'm excited to see where that comes and where that goes and uh, how people are able to utilize that within the game itself. I think there's a lot of possibilities that go in because those are two separate, completely separate pieces of the game. I think there's a lot of possibilities there and I'm excited to see what people do with it. On that note, and I saw some people upset about this, and I'm not sure why. So I'm going to go into this one, and I'm going to spend a little time explaining my reasoning behind it. You're only allowed to level up or craft with one skill, meaning you have you can be an alchemist, a blacksmith, an outfitter, a provisioner, a scribe, a stonemason, or a, a woodworker slash carpenter. We'll call them carpenter. 
So, with these skill sets, you can only pick one of them as a crafter, and you can only pick one sub sub uh, specialty off of them. So, like blacksmith, have you can either go a specialty of weapons or you can go a specialty of armors. You know, as a that was mentioned, and some of the other ones they have their own specialties within them. Now, I saw some people that were upset at this, and and I was confused. I, I didn't quite get it. I didn't understand it, and. For me, when I was reading the, the comments and the post on this, it, it again, it really confused me because what I heard was, I don't like the fact that I can't be, I can't learn all the different crafting skills. Why can't I be a master crafter in every different crafting skill? And my thought on that was, well, I feel like it's the same with adventuring. I can't be every single class in adventuring just because I got from one to 50 on a cleric in adventuring doesn't mean that I can just start working on my shaman or shaman 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 my uh, shaman skills from level one to fifty on that same character and have all those skills on the same one character. That was kind of my thought and how I put it in my mind. And I don't know if if I'm thinking of it differently than maybe you are, but I wanted to hear your thoughts on that, Maul, because for me, one craft skill and one specialization. Even though he did mention, you know, Sethos did mention that. They are looking at ways for people to be able to switch professions if they're, you know, if they so choose later down the road um, in a way that's not just brutal, but in a way that's, you know, that works within the game. He's looking, they're looking into that. That's to be determined on details, but they're looking for ways for people to be able to switch professions later down the road. And again, for me, I just, I was kind of baffled by the response of, I want to be able to craft for every single skill. I like the fact that people have to choose. I like the fact that people are, have to be unique. I like the fact that we have to depend on each other for different specializations within different skills. I mean, that to me makes sense, but I didn't know if, if maybe you saw that differently. So I, I, I like it. Just if, if, if I had to sum it up in one phrase, yes, I like it. Um, but I get it because as somebody who likes to craft, I find it extremely stressful when I have to make a decision like especially when a game is coming out like oh gosh will blacksmithing even be important uh is food important what what do i want to do it depends on what your motivations are you want to be somebody who can make a ton of money i could totally see why you wouldn't want to be able to do every crap also for the whole concept of on a game that probably will be highly based on community it's really hard to have alt alternate characters people figure it out but if you haven't created some kind of brand for yourself or you don't have a way to make your names, just just people that you haven't told, hey, I made an old. If they can't look at your character and know that that's you, that matters to people. And honestly, it, I think it would kind of matter to you too. Honestly, it, knowing that you want to be a streaming personality, it'll matter to me for the same reason. You would want some recognition there. Somebody that could say, oh my gosh, it's sacred cool, cool guy, blah, 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 yeah. Um, so to have to create more characters to do that crafting, I totally get it. But for the health of crafting, just as at its core, for getting economy, for getting every other ambition out there, for the health of crafting, it you can't make a RuneScape type situation where somebody literally have everything because then that's one less person reliant on the economy. And that's one person who could possibly dominate a lot of stuff, especially very early. So I think it kind of spreads the wealth a bit. It also makes the community a little stronger. You start to get, make relationships with people who need your constant work. Um, for example, when I played uh, Arcage uh, for a little bit, uh, making ships was a big deal. So carpenters were huge. And so you would make these relationships with people who could make the pieces you needed for your boat or they would have access to certain trees that got the birch or whatever you needed to make it. Um, it's so critical and, and I, I want people to see that, but I coming from, it's so critical that you can't have one character do it all. Um, it's, and, and even to put it as simply as you did, a shaman can't be a druid. A shaman can't be a druid and a warrior. You can't be a druid, a warrior, a wizard. Like <laughs> it, it needs to be more simplified. Um, I would kind of like to see um, if community is really important to you and you don't want to have a bunch of alts. I feel like games like Guild Wars have done a good job of creating an identity that sticks with all of your characters, but they all have a different unique name. Uh, I think also hmm. Elder Scrolls Online does it with the whole like at simple blah blah. Um, making that 
the identity in Pantheon and kind of downplaying the character name might be a good way to, to make people feel okay with making ults that can do the multiple crafts. And that buys into the whole, hey, I have one adventuring character that's level 50. It is strong enough to go craft or gather anywhere. So now I can have a crafting ult and they don't have to leave this, you know. Um, I, I think people will love it over time, but I think that there are some games out there that have your character can do everything and maybe they're just accustomed to that. But I just think it's it's too important to to segment crafting down to one with one specialty. It just creates a need for people to be more diverse in a crafting economy. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now I want to make one point and I so I'm make two I'm gonna go in two points here, but I'll make the first one. I do want to make sure that it's clear, especially for everybody listening, um, you know, over the radio or just watching on Twitch, regardless. But harvesting, we haven't talked about harvesting yet, gathering those materials, fishing, gathering, logging, mining, skinning, scavenging. All of those are available to all characters, meaning you're going to be able to learn them all. You're going to be able to harvest, mine, uh, gather wood, um, gather, you know, our fish you'll be able to do all this and, and scavenge even you'll be able to learn all these skills all these harvesting skills completely no questions asked right at this point in time we're gonna be able to learn them all it's the specialty of what skill do you want to learn to utilize that material that's limited meaning the alchemist the blacksmith you know you can mine all day long but if you're a scribe for example and working with spell research you might not really need to do anything with mining material um, you might be more inclined to utilize skinning material, but you might want to mine a node to gather resources, to gather materials for your friends, your guild, or to sell even. Uh, who knows? You might even use it in, in being a spell research guy as well. Who knows? But uh, harvesting will be available, and all the skills within harvesting will be available to learn for everyone at this point in time. So, And, and I think people should keep that in mind. I think that's absolutely. a successful way to do it. You know, if you don't want to have Absolutely. to have eight different gatherers and eight different crafters, it's enough to have one character that can do all the gathering and make it your main character. Make it the one that you literally spend 98% of your time in the game in. But have those alts that, you know, you made, you put in the effort, you made time for an alt, and now you have two crafters. Now you have two pieces of the economy and do that more and more over time. Yeah, absolutely. And, and again, so mentioning, uh, you know, we I see some of the chat here going in in Twitch, and I did want to kind of bring this up. So the way that I took the information, and we'll make sure I want to make sure that everybody goes and watches Bad uh, Basgram's interview with Sethos to make sure they hear it for themselves. But the way that I took the information, let's say that you're a blacksmith, yeah, you're only going to be able to learn that one skill craft. However, you're going to be able to learn all of blacksmithing's core. Then you're going to have the specialty trees. So there's going to be certain things like in the weapon specialty tree. There's going to be certain weapons that you'll be making that you couldn't make in the core blacksmithing skill. Now, if you're a armor blacksmith and you're specializing in armor making, there still might be weapons within the blacksmith tree that you can make at that core level. However, there may be weapons in that specialized tree or category that you can't make. And that's where that difference lies. You're still going to be a blacksmith at its core and able to utilize all those blacksmithing abilities in the core, but you're going to have different pieces of it that branch out into those more specialized roles and that's where it's going to separate you know each each of that uh from the other so i just want to make that clear because they did mention that with the provisioner for example you know food and drink there will be food and drink that you'll be able to make all the way through however there will be certain food that you can only make if you're specialized in making that food in making food or certain drink you can only make if you're specialized in making drink so that's where that separation comes into play of the specializations. So I just want to—that's that the way I took it. That's the way I understand it. Um, I'm hoping that I'm right on that, but I want to make sure that that's clear from the way that I took that information from the interview. So you were mentioning that, for example, a carpenter—you know, people needed the carpenter for boats, you know, in past games. Well, I think here we have the stonemason with the sculptor, and I think it's a really good example. You know, even Sethos mentioned that the sculptor will be able to make a lot of materials and useful things for blacksmith, alchemists, you know, people like that, uh, whether it be them sculpting molds that, you know, a blacksmith would use to mold different armor or weapons or whether them sculpting, you know, uh, glass that, you know, an alchemist is going to use when they're, you know, making uh, their potions or uh, poisons or something like that. So I think that, you know, we're going to see that with certain 
professions uh, with certain specialties that there is going to be that uh, kind of, I guess you could say, universal skill within a sculptor that these these are going to be they're going to have a lot of focus around making things for other classes or for other skills potentially to utilize. So a lot of their wealth, a lot of their need is going to come from other crafters who need them to help them create some of that stuff. Um, Could and I interject I think, just real quick? Yeah, go for it. That exact point, what you just said, I think is probably the number one reason if I've ever felt upset about not being able to be every craft, it's exactly that. Like, ah, oh, gosh. So I have to go buy these mithril filigree that I can't make myself to make this thing. So I get it. I, sorry, just to seal, no. you know, the, I get people are upset about not being able to be every craft. That's probably the most frustrating thing about that. But I think it's important for me. So it's just something that I think once people get into it and they deal with it, they'll be okay with it. But go ahead, sorry. No, absolutely. And, and again, so just so everyone knows, that's what we have them all on the, on the show here to be the bad guy, to, to, no, I'm just playing. Uh, <laughs> no, no, to, to, but we do, we want different opinions. We want people to, to know that, you know, you're not alone out there with your own opinion on, you know, what you think. I have my opinion, Maul has his opinion, and we're here to openly discuss those. And that, I think it's a good thing to have these type of discussions, especially so that everybody can hear that. So again, you know, looking at the professions, looking at the skills, the specializations, and things like that. Um, I'm excited to myself to to try to get into this and see what I can do with the class that I, I picked to you know go forward with. I do think that certain classes will be more apt to pick certain skills when it comes to crafting, just because of potential abilities or bonuses they may have. Um, reading and again, but that doesn't mean that. Every single, let's say, rogue, for example. Um, actually, no. Let's go with like a. Let's go with more of like a, a ranger. Uh, I know that was a hot topic for the newsletter. A lot of uh, information there. So with the ranger, we we saw a little bit about that. We did see that you know they are going to have some range skills. And in the interview with Sethos, we hear that oh maybe you can create a poison that applies to a dagger or an arrow. Well, okay. Great. So as a ranger, now do I want to be a bowyer? Do I want to be able to f focus on making a bow? Um, or do I want to be focuses on a focus on making a poison that I can apply to my arrows? Which one's going to be more beneficial, most cost effective for me in the in the long run? You know, things like that are going to have to be thought of going forward. Uh, there's going to be a lot of variation. I mean, you know, for people that pick, let's say they're an armor smith or a, we'll say a blacksmith and they have an armor specialization, that armor specialization may be very, very vital to them at the time that they make the armor that they're looking to make. And it may save them a lot of money. But then again, they may have to go to buy food and drink off the food and drink specialist on a daily basis. They may have to go buy uh, that Again, they may have to go buy that mold off of a sculpture, uh, sculptor. They may, you know, again, there may be a lot of dependencies that they have on different crafters for different things, and maybe that one piece of armor in the long run wouldn't have cost them as much as they spend on food and drink on a daily basis, uh, you know, over the course of a, a extended amount of time. So things like that, for me, I'm starting to already think about. Wow, what what does this mean? How do I look to what you know? What am I going to utilize the most? What's going to help me as far as you know, cost efficiency? What's going to make it to where I'm able to sustain my own self the best in my own class the best going forward? There's a lot of different things. Spell research, for example, item inscription. All of this is going to matter. Food and drink. I'm hoping that food and drink matter from from provisioners. I would like to see that, you know, as we continue to go forward, these, these potions, these poisons that we get from alchemists, they matter going forward. Uh, carpentry, housing, boats potentially, you know, it, how, we'll see how those come along in the future. Maybe at first, carpentry, when it comes to like woodworking, isn't the most vital piece or the most vital skill to have. But then all of a sudden, we get an expansion down the road that releases housing into the environment. And now everyone wants to find their local woodworker to help them out with building some some of those cosmetics or some of their house, for example, or something like that. There's a lot of possibilities down the, down the road, um, a lot of things to think about and consider. I don't think it's going to be you can just pick one thing and that's the best thing, period. I'm really hoping to see 
crafting as its own unique and viable uh, way of life. But I'm hoping to see that, like you said, we have a dependency on others, even though it can be frustrating at times. I think like we've seen in the chat here, that interaction with the community and the economy and everything that goes along with crafting is going to be vital to seeing the success of, you know, Pantheon and its crafting system continue to flourish. So I'm excited to see all that come, you know, come about and where that all takes us. And I'm still, I'm already starting to think of what do I need to do for my class and what's going to be the best for me and, and really starting to put together a lot of the if and buts uh, as I look to, you know, plane, you know, come release in, in the future. So, um, so a mall with that, I know we're running out of time. We got just a few minutes left here. Uh, I'll open it up to this any, fun, by the way, I like this. it's fun. <laughs> it's a lot of fun. I love yeah. it. Any, any thoughts closing us out? Uh, at least a million. Um, <laughs> no, I, I think that. Pantheon uh, VR, they're playing it really well, coming out with this big information, uh, because with all the outcry and the upset feelings, they're getting so much feedback. Um, what I would hope is that people feel completely entitled and able and invited to give their opinion. Absolutely. And uh, don't hold back emotion. Don't hold back anything, because ultimately, games are meant to be fun, and that's an emotion. Just... Be respectful um, when you're providing that feedback and understand that um, your perspective may be short-sighted in some regard um, and just be willing to see both sides of it. But in in general, bring your prior experience into MMOs into this because when you're providing feedback and when you're learning news like this, um, it's important to know what you like and what you don't like and to try and inject that. They, they may like your feedback. Be vocal. This is the time to do it. The game is really young. Um, alpha Pre-alpha testing is still going on right now. So those testers, if you're a tester out there, make sure you're providing feedback. Uh, make sure you're on active on the forums if you want to be heard. Um, because this, this big news that's coming out, I think overall people are excited about crafting, even if they don't like one or two elements. Um, just be vocal and, and keep an eye out on stuff. Try to try to affect positive change now, as opposed to being frustrated later. Absolutely, absolutely. I couldn't have said it better myself. Uh, you know, again, I appreciate you on here, Maul. It's always good to have you know fellow uh, counterparts on here to talk a little bit about it, to interject some you know different thoughts, different opinions, because I think it's good for everybody to hear that you know me and you we we're so close to together working through this and we play games on a nightly basis. We have a lot of fun, but we also have very different opinions on certain aspects. And we see things very differently, and that's good. It's good. It's not a negative thing at all. It's a good thing because it means that we're both keeping an open mind. We're continuing to talk about it, and we're, we're both staying positive. Regardless of what our opinion is, we're both positive that this game is going to be a blast for us, and we're going to enjoy it together regardless of VR's ultimate decision down the line. Um, we'll just continue to voice our opinions and share that, and I'm hoping everybody else does as well. And I'm looking forward to seeing where we actually land when it comes release with Pantheon because I've seen so many really awesome things up until this point and I'm just excited to see where it all comes together and, and see it all just unravel before my eyes come release. So with that, uh, guys, I can't thank you all enough for, for tuning in tonight, hanging out with us. We're out of time, but as always, we'll pick it back up on Wednesday and Friday of next week. I'm looking forward to having more discussions with you all. I can't wait to see the Voice of Tournament show with Kilson and Zippy. Make sure you tune into that on March 5th at 6 p.m. Also, every Friday night at 6 p.m., Voice of Tournaments will be doing their same show. They'll be broadcasting that live via Pantheon Radio as well. So there's going to be a lot more coming up in Pantheon Radio. Hopefully everybody's tuning in, got, it down, got the app downloaded on their phone. And again, uh, guys, make sure you're giving these guys some credit. Enter the competition. They've got the competition up and running. Win that Echo Dot so you can listen to Pantheon Radio all the time. And uh, I can't thank you all enough for tuning in to Twitch as well as Pantheon Radio and hanging out with us tonight. We'll hopefully see you next Wednesday. Thanks, guys. Have a good night. Bye, guys. It was fun. All right. Perfect. So as far as Pantheon Radio goes, we ended at 